All right, so welcome back. And today I'm going to just be going over an inking I did. I kind of, with this, I'm planning on doing a like showing where I've started with inking and then slowly gain and gain and gain until I get to a certain point where I feel quite accomplished. And I'll probably like set a date from like this date forward to end date goal. And I can just show, you know, where you can go, where I can go with my own art. But also, not just that, when you set to your mind to something and you repeatedly work on it, just to show the progression of something and to show the creativity that also goes into something. And when your mind has that opportunity to start expanding and growing with whatever holds your passion, just to see where it goes. So that's what I want to do with this. And I'll make this a uh, series. I'm still working very hard on trying to like get my schedule down and figure out what I want to do um, with channel stuff and just other things I'm kind of working on. Um, but I am definitely going to try to make it like two videos a week, if not more, and just kind of exploring and changing and working with different stuff. But anyways, I think we should probably start getting into the actual inking and what the process was behind this. So I've done inking in the past and with this, I kind of just wanted to take advantage of the fact that I have red ink. And I don't normally use my red ink. I normally use the black ink, which is this Indian ink. There we go. But I thought, you know what? Why not take a risk and have a bit more fun? Because, like... One thing is artists, and not just artists, but as humans, we have to take risks. No matter how painful it is. Believe me, I know. Um, but the red ink I used was this brand called Higgins. And I was originally going to start out doing like um, more of a technological future sort of style uh, but one thing I know is if you haven't drawn people in a while and I wanted to do like a person with that if you haven't drawn people for a while it can take a lot of work I mean look don't get me wrong everything takes a lot of work until it just becomes natural but especially with humans and capturing how humans look, that can be extremely difficult because there's so many little details in a human face that you aren't going to get them like spot on. You can get a likeness, but every moment kind of changes someone. So hopefully that made sense too. But I was originally going to do something like that and then I just my own i'll do a video about this but i am one of those people that when it comes to art i'm kind of a perfectionist and when i know it's nature i give myself the leeway or when i'm capturing something in nature i give myself the leeway to not make it perfect to have those airs but when it's a human i i get all clammed up and like so anyways, going over this, um, okay, so going over like the actual tools I used, I used um, a nib and I believe this is just a quill. Sorry, I'm like checking my footage, it kind of got a little haggard, but there's several different types of nibs that you can use. Um, there's ones that are more fine than this, or bigger, or like they're just 
lighter. The metal is more bendable. Some are just very stiff. If you want to get like small lines, go for something that's more stiff. If you want something with brighter lines and the ink to kind of just bubble up or spread out, go with the softer nib. So that that's my first tool I used. And the second one is just a standard round number two brush. And I did use a Q-tip here and there, but it didn't get the exact effect. But going off of that, it's always good to test different materials, try different things and experiment with different types of, well, materials. So I believe, I'm under the impression and belief that I think anyone that does inking should always use a brush in there. Just because you can get some light wash or like some heavier wash of color and just go over the piece to add that shading in it. Of course, you could just use the standard quill and whatever type of nib you wanted to and get hatching, cross hatching or um, stent not stenciling, but stippling. There we go. Or stippling. So to get shadows and create a different effect um, or go for more of a comic effect. Because like from my best of my knowledge, um, when artists go and create comic books, they will actually ink it all out first and then they have someone go over it in color they'll have like i forget if someone goes over it with pencil and then a different person inks it or it could be the same person just depending on how big the company is but little side fact yeah so there's anyways there's a lot of different ways to ink and create shadows and movement and light why I'm under the belief that you should use a quill and a brush and practice with both. Though practicing with a brush is basically water painting or watercolor. So if you want to start out with watercolors, I would suggest doing that before going into inking and then basically there's not a whole lot you need to know about using like one of these. The only thing you need to know is as long as there's ink in this little gap and then you press down and pull downwards. As long as you're going downwards or going against, not like this, but going this way. Uh, as I look off to the screen to make sure I'm showing everything correctly. That's how you'll get your ink out. It's kind of like drawing, but not completely. Anyways, I should probably start describing what this inking... I mean, besides the fact that this is just like my first one, and I kind of want to do a series and just show the progression of it. So with this one, I really wanted to capture some forget-me-nots. Um, by not forgetting them, obviously. Uh, that was terrible. But I kind of just want to... I didn't get too much into, like, the shadow of them and the different types of movement, but I kind of wanted to... Originally, my idea was to make a human, then I wanted to make a space plant, and then I kind of just decided, you know what? I think I'm going to just stick with something that's more simple that I can just go off a similar image and take reference a couple of reference photos and create my own and that's what I did I could have focused a bit more on shadow but in this one I kind of just wanted to get back into the feel of it and see where I went with it and now actually going through it so since I'm going back and like re-watching this video 
I think I totally could have, if I had blue ink, that would have looked great. But I wanted to change it up with a different color. And I think it adds a different flair and a different kind of sense to it. So I'm grateful that I did it in red instead of black, but either or would have made it look good. And that's just kind of the beauty of art. You can take something and make it your own. And it doesn't matter what anyone else says. And one thing I will say is try, if you're painting, inking, drawing, coloring, whatever, try doing it in a different color because there are pencils that are blue or red, like drawing pencils, and you can go through and just do your standard art, but in a different color, or you can layer them. So for a while, here, give me a moment. Okay, so before, like one of my first inkings I did, and okay, like, First off, I never finished this. It was this. And I intend to go back over it or redo the whole entire thing because I like it. But when I first did that piece, I started out with a blue pencil and I kind of just did everything in blue. And then I went over with a standard pencil to just kind of tighten up some lines where I liked it. And then I went over with my ink. And that's kind of just this, you have to like take it step by step. And I think when you take something like that step by step, it really just helps the piece stand out. And it also gives you a chance to add different things in and be a bit more, have a bit more fun and a bit more creativity. But anyways, getting back to this um, inking I did, I haven't really talked about it. This is kind of just like a bit of a ramble slash vlogish sort of thing I'm doing right now. But with this piece at least, once like jumping to now where I finished the flowers, and the little leaf that comes on through the side. I didn't really want to add a huge amount of detail in the background because I wanted the main focus to be on the flowers. So, and the smaller like baby flowers in the corner and the big adult flowers that are standing out more. So I decided to go through and do a light wash of like a little red on my paintbrush and I just went over the whole entire thing and then I went back and got a little bit more red and started making like lines going straight across to give it that movement. To give it at least something else besides a lightly toned background and it makes the image, the images of these flowers pop out more. I don't know if that helps anyone for your own art, but background is so important. And with something like this, sometimes you have to do the background last, but normally it's good to do the background first. But in this, I kind of felt like I was just wanted to see where I could go. So with all that background texture, it just adds more variety and it makes your focus go to those flowers. Also something else that I should mention when I'm, I'm like looking at this too, my camera's over here, screen's over here, crazy, I know. Um, which one do I look at? So one thing I do suggest, and one thing I suggest when you are painting or inking is or drawing or any type of art don't put your focus on the center put it off to the center or around the center 
just because it's too it just it just doesn't work always and I think when you when it's not I know there's a specific reason for not to do something or for not to have it go directly to the center I'm spacing on it I know I took art classes I'm an art student I should know this but I don't um off the top of my head but it's just put it off to the side or it just adds variety and it doesn't make it feel so sterile and it feels more has more of a realistic sense and at least for me that's the best reason i can come up with i'll probably go and research it and then forget to uh, i'll probably say it in another video but or you can look it up yourselves but yeah so that was just kind of a ramble plus my process of inking and where i am and also just background sound if you just want to listen to background sound um but I want to present and give ideas and help people kind of show off their creative side. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Thank you for taking the time to watch it and like it if you do. But there will be more of these to come. I'm going to try and see what other type of content I can do, not just like... Oh, yes, I have a certain type of thing I'm going to do. I kind of want to explore a bit more. So, I hope you enjoy, and I will see you in the next one.